हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट ट्वेंटी थ्री स्लम्स एंड आवर टॉपिक इज अप्रोचेस टू स्लम प्रॉब्लम्स सम एक्सपर्ट्स एडवोकेट्स द पॉलिसी ऑफ स्लम क्लियरेंस वाइल अदर्स बिलीव प्रूविंग वेलफेयर सर्विस टू स्लम डिवेलर्स स्टिल अदर्स स्ट्रेस प्रोवाइडिंग ग्रेटर इकोनॉमिक अपॉर्चुनिटीज for slum dwellers all however have serious limitations as solutions either along or together to the slum dwellers the traditional welfareist approach is advocate the policy of destroying the slums tearing it down physically and redevelopment with subsidized housing It is believed that the providing welfare service to slum dwellers is the best way to bring about changes in slum areas and to solve the slum problems. This traditional approach to slum problems through clearance and redevelopment with subsidized housing has been criticized in its application to the developing countries. as the cities in underdeveloped nations raise their standard the poor people from rural areas flock to the city slums the subsidized housing project will make cities more attractive and the number of poor rural people arriving in cities will become difficult to handle so the only way to reduce urban slum areas is to raise rural living standard to those of a city slum clearance however is not exclusively a matter of replacing standardizing housing with new planned slums in fact the proper orientation of residents to a better and organized way of life and to the maintenance of the entire neighborhood it is essential and this orientation requires the system of education and motivation of all the people men and women and children to the fundamental of personal hygiene home management and environment sanitation There is no question that measures to bring about improvements in economic conditions will be of great value to slum people. These include some more adequate wages, guaranteed minimum income, and discriminatory employment policies, accessible and inexpensive credit program to train and retain youths and adults more effective training for certain occupation and improve social security and public assistance but there is another aspect of their welfareist approach to slum problems geeta divan vama has highlighted this issue in her work slumming india she argues that the real problem is not the pervasive urban squalor that offends us all but rather the moral and intellectual bankruptcy that sustains it she states that for the urban poor minimal landless options outreach services instead of hospital street education instead of proper schools slum upgrading in the place of housing all have become very fashionable they are also one way streets once all urban land is lost to less essential more glamorous uses there will be no turning the slumming clock back after all it is impossible that an iam built on an excessive 200 acres of land or a new fenced cyber park or any of the push farm houses larger than the 
ceiling limits will be dynamited to make room for TB sanatorium or a municipal school or a low income housing project and if and when our welfare state happens to change its mind about what is needed for urban welfare and to stop urban slumming. According to her, even competing interest in urban resources, the state should make planned development a fundamental need of urbanites, calling for a high degree of responsibility on the part of those in charge of urban governance. In such a set of solution like clearing a few slums or building a few tenements for the poor will touch only the fringe of the problem and it will take the existing social setup for granted. Urban renewal program based on these assumptions are far from the real answer. Urban community development offers a new developmental approach to some of the problems of urban areas in general and of slums in particular. It involves two fundamental ideas, the development of effective community feeling within an urban context and the development of self-help and citizens participation of individual initiative in seeking community integration and change. In other words, this approach relies directly on the slum dwellers themselves. If their apathy and the dependence can be overcome and replaced by pride and a sense of initiative, the slum dwellers can make good use of solving their manifold problems. The approach to the problems of the city slums through urban community development involves the following elements. The creation of a sense of the social cohesion on the, a neighborhood basis and strengthening of group interrelationship. Encouragement and stimulation of self-help through the initiative of the indigenous in the community. Stimulation by outside agencies where initiative for self-help is lacking. Reliance upon persuasion rather than upon compulsion to produce change through the efforts of people. Identification and development of local leadership. Development of civic consciousness and acceptance of civic responsibilities. Use of professional and technical assistance to support the efforts of the people involved. Coordination of city services to meet neighborhood needs and problems. Provisions of training in democratic procedures that may result in decentralization of some government functions. There are four main objectives of urban community development program applicable to the slum are development of community feeling, self-help improvement of a person or a group by its own contributions and efforts and largely for its own benefits. Indigenous leadership and cooperation between government and the people in the use of services. In 1958, the Heli Pilot Project in Urban Community Development was launched with grants totaling 1,70,539 dollars from Ford Foundation to the Delhi Municipal Corporation. The Delhi Pilot Project represented both in philosophy and planning a unique attempt to produce changes in urban areas. In its overall objective of developing a program, organizing communities and listing self-help, 
identifying and training local leadership and working out techniques of change. The Delhi pilot project appears to have been responsibly successful. Apart from some administrative problems, another major problem in such urban community development project is to devise ways of keeping the original monument of cities, citizens' self-help organization. The Marxist and socialist approach to the problem of slums clearly points out that if only the land in urban area is nationalized and removed from the orbit of market operation, this is single step which does not require resources but only breaking away from the Burji's norms of private property and legitimacy on remuneration to unearned income occupy, occurring to ownership will remove half the problems of the urban areas by ending all activities that have developed around land as a marketable commodity. Abolition of private profit seeking agencies for constructional activity is another essential step for the solution of the urban problems especially slums. Only public assurance and provision of work to every able-bodied worker can provide the vast majority of non-property classes the purchasing power so necessary for survival. This assurance can be given only if employment in production, distribution and service is freed from market operation of capitalist competitive economy. An economy based on the social ownership of the means of production and a social development that does not treat human beings as commodities. Now let us wind up the session and take rest. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with a self-learning podcast.